Hey everyone, Alex Italanda here. This will be a shorter intro. If you want the full one, check out the first part of the Behind the Ostima series, which I highly recommend if you want to do this in order. And if you enjoyed the first episode and would like access to the whole series, you can do that on the Ostium Network Patreon at patreon.com slash ostiumpodcast. At the $5 tier, you can get access to the 40 plus episodes of the Behind the Ostium series, plus ad-free episodes of the Ostium Network shows and a whole bunch of bonus material. So let's get started with the next episode of Behind the Ostium, where I sit down with Dwayne Farver of the Manifestations podcast and a big fan of the show, and we talk about the ins and outs of our favorite show, The Ostium Podcast. So let's move on to Croatoan, which it's, yeah, there's, the story's always had a big kind of, you know, the story of Roanoke and all that has always had a big spot in my heart for just being a wonderfully mysterious story, even though it's pretty much debunked at this point. That <laughs> <laughs> um, they just went with the Indians. <laughs> Um, just the, uh, the story surrounding me. And I can remember I'm pretty sure first seeing about it on the TV show, unsolved mysteries, a whole little piece about it and stuff. And just, you know, the, the mystery and the interest in it. Um, so that was why I think that was one of those things that it just automatically led to, well, if he's going to go through a door, where's he going to go to? And then the character led to Roanoke and then realizing, oh, that's where I am. Oh, interesting. Well, what's going on there? And then exploring that and then, discovering oh there's no people there why are there no people and what's going on and is it because it's just like the roanoke story or is it something else as we discover later on that all the places they visit are in fact um empty uh i did also intentionally set up in that episode um that he has kind of a choice he has two doors to choose from he can um jake when he's at the headquarters there at the clock tower he can choose either to search out the rooms more thoroughly and see what's going on there or find out what's behind the next door. And that was partially a kind of dramatic setup for Jake to have to make a choice on something and also setting up for more stuff to come, more stuff to keep the listener interested sort of thing. Oh, yeah, I do have a note here also that uh, from I'm a huge Stephen King fan, and so his uh, – it was a it was a book, but it was actually a TV show, the Storm of the Century, a miniseries that he did about a yeah about a main a tiny island in Maine off the coast of Maine where they get yep um, snowed in by a storm and this weird wizard guy comes and threatens to take everyone away. <laughs> um, so and they did just talk about Roanoke in that too. So I'm I'm sure that was a even though it wasn't a reference necessarily where I was completely aware of it, it was in the back of my mind, you know. Um, and I also had fun researching this a little more thoroughly, getting a feel for the time and the setting and stuff like that, and trying to put a lot of that in there with what the place would look like, um, the houses and things like that. Um, and then I also had fun later on at towards the end of season three when they go back there and having fun with that. Yeah. I, I like how it starts out with Jake assuring us he's sane. Um more trying to convince himself, possibly, but... Yeah, I was going to say, it's, he's not assuring you. It's just definitely for Jake's purpose. Because <laughs> he's, you know, he's uh, he's run away from his work at this point. You know, he's already got a black spot on his, you know, record. And uh, he's digging himself in big deeper, basically. So and that's also a thing I think um, I, I definitely explore more in other episodes, too, that he's doing these recordings as, a, as is Monica and... Dave, you know, later on, um, and they're always not, they're not always sure who they're doing the recordings for. Are they for themselves? Is it for someone specific in mind or something more nebulous than that? So I think that's a part of it. There, there was one comment that I, I think you forgot about as well, um, where Jake said he was going to keep the swearing to a minimum. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, he did. And then, Monica showed up. And true, true. <laughs> he was done for. Or maybe it was the tea. Could have been the tea, you know? a, a An adverse side effect of it that they didn't know about when they created an ostium. <laughs> you'll, have to, you'll have to write that in. Um, also, I am drinking tea as we do this. <laughs> I'm, I'm drinking water so I can get to bed. <laughs> More um, I, I did um, like how when he arrives back at ostium, um, everything is the same except the padlock's gone. 
So immediately intrigue, you know, what's someone that's got to be that's got to mean someone else is there. Who who is it? You know, why was it there? Why'd they take it off? You know, or did they want Jake to go in? That was one of those um, things. I it was a risk I did as I was writing that part because I remember it and thinking, well, if I do this, I'm going to put myself in a particular situation where I'll have to explain it. It has to be this or that or whatever. And and I had no idea where it was going to lead to. But it was one of those things where it felt right for the character. It felt like, you know, I was in Jake's mind and that's what I saw when he was there. And that's how I wrote it. And later on, I'd have to explain why it was like that, which I do. But at the point at that time, it was just a, I was just as shocked basically as the listener hearing that for the time, first time, you know. Um, and then I just followed it up and seeing where it went. Then uh, when he gets to the to the clock tower, um, like you had already mentioned that there were more doors inside that he didn't bother to um, explore right. after mm-hmm. looking at the, the map table um, decides um, to go check out door number two since the clock right. tower is door number one. Um, right. Uh, what do you think? Do you think that was the right choice for Jake or would you, have, would you have checked those other doors? Uh, I'm, I'm an, I'm an old school, um, RPG in D and I would have checked the other <laughs> doors before I went anywhere else. Um, that's just me. Now that I'm actually thinking about it. I think the real reason Jake did it is because he was actually scared of what he might find behind those, that he might find someone behind there or something that would just be hard to believe. So instead he chose that door and then ended up, at an impossible place at an impossible time that was also impossible to believe. <laughs> but yeah, I feel now that's that's the reason why he did that. So that's what we're sticking with. <laughs> no, that that's actually uh, that's my next uh, note is that Jake makes a kind of hero's quest type of decision mm-hmm. um, when he puts his past behind him and risks everything by stepping into the blackness once he yeah. opens door two. But it, yeah, I mean, and I, I think I set that off. I think it was in that scene where he's. Does he say he's, is that the one where he says he's on a precipice? I know I've done that a few times with what he's I going through. Didn't the door write, I didn't write that down, but I do remember that something around uh, a line like that. Cause it is a, you know, venturing into the unknown and not knowing what you're going to find. But as if you've been listening to the show for a while, as you know, that's kind of how Jake is. And I like to think it's kind of how I am. If I was ever <laughs> faced with that uh, decision to make that I would do that. Um, or would like to do that. <laughs> uh, I, the same for me, except I think I'd probably actually be a little more cautious than Jake is. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I am a push the button and find out what it does later type of person, but mm-hmm. Jake, Jake's a little more uh, ambitious. I'm trying to think if he, uh, yeah, if he changes it all over time, or is he still the gung ho type? <laughs> I think he gets probably once Monica's there, he gets more confident because he knows any bind he gets into, she's going to be able to no, <laughs> save that's, his ass. <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to say. I think he gets a little more confident, uh, especially at the end of season three. Um, mm-hmm. The the last half of season three, he's he's definitely finding out more about himself. I did make some notes about um, Roanoke, but probably nothing you didn't find in your in your research when you were writing it. Um, I, I was just trying. I was actually trying to find um, like hidden things that you you slipped in, but the only the only thing actually that I came up with in this episode is when he's walking through Austin before he even gets to the clock tower. Is he's rattling off the door numbers that he sees, and I'm like, oh, is this a number sequence? Am I gonna have to like decode <laughs> something? But I couldn't I couldn't find one. Um, it is not, but I did write all those numbers down in an important place so that I wouldn't trip myself up later and say, well, here's that door out in the field that he did that when when someone else could say, but that was on that first street that he went to. (laughs) Though I did kind of abandon the idea of the, uh, I mean, I guess they're still there, the the signs kind of above the the doors and things like that for different places. Um, I'll be honest, that was probably an idea I started with that I just didn't continue going through. But in my mind, those signs can still be there. They just weren't that important. Well, maybe not the moment. Maybe later on they'll come become important. Um, I I had the same kind of uh, panic that Jake did once he was in Roanoke, that the door would not be there um, and he would be stuck there. Um, mm-hmm. I probably would have done the exact same thing Jake did. You know, let's test this. Um, 
<laughs> and then, you know, once he does go back to Ostium from Roanoke, um, again, he's, he's driving back to his home, um, in silence thinking, you know, what, what is Ostium? All right. The questions I was coming up with at the end of the episode, what is Ostium? What did Jake or why did Jake find it? Did he, and again, did he find it or was he led there? Um, was he chosen or meant to find it or was he just like, ha- he was just on GeoGuessr at the time and it was, you know, a lucky happenstance. Mm-hmm. Um, and why are the doors numbered? That, that has been one of the biggest things. Um, obviously they're going through them in sequence. So they, you know, to have a sequence, right. you have to have something to, you know, number them with. Um, but it just seemed if, the, like you were saying, they, they have signs. So you do have the, the bakers or, you know, whatever on, on whatever street. Well, these are all really important questions that I think some of them I could give you further answers to, but I feel like a lot of them are also ones that will eventually get solved down the road. Possibly not until the last episode, but you never know. <laughs> they will get resolved. That's a, that's as good as an, an answer as I, I would expect, I think. Yeah. My, that, my, my goal definitely with this is I never, I don't want to leave any, uh, red herrings just hanging there for no reason or, or do the lost thing where we set everything up too much and then can't actually solve it. And that's definitely one thing as I've been writing it. Um, I've been really happy with that. I'll go in sometimes thinking, oh, this is going to be a tricky scene to write or it's a tricky thing to resolve or whatever. And then once I just start writing it, Jake and Monica always figure it out and find the way to solve it and deal with it and get through it. And even when I've done things with the weird padlock and stuff like that, well, it turned out Monica was involved in that before with the Austin network. And that's why it was set up that way. You know, it's all it is all linked. And I do eventually find a way out of it, which is makes me happy. <laughs> time time travel is handy, handy that way. <laughs> 